high hopes for the season finale of House of the Dragon. Anyone? Turns out it's mostly filler. Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be reviewing House of the Dragon season 2 episode 8, which is the finale. Um, maybe I had too high expectations here, but uh, let's just say that it fell very flat for me. There was no fighting. There was no battle. There were only dragons in a handful of scenes, which is fine. You don't always have to have dragons, although that is a plus. Um, there was no fight. Like, episode four was like this huge epic siege fight thing and just like, and it felt very finale-like. This had nothing. So literally, I'm not even kidding you, this will probably have spoilers, but don't worry because the spoilers are not that important to the show because everything in this freaking episode was literally filler. I'm gonna go through everything I can remember as fast as I can. Um, the Lannister brother, there's two Lannister brothers, one's on the council with Aegon and King's Landing. The other one is um, actually with the Lannister army. He secures an army of pirate people. There's a female leader there and um, um, she won't serve with a man unless he can defeat her in combat. So they fight, then they celebrate, and then she wants him to have babies with all of her wives. I don't know what the significant was. I looked it up. The actor is actually a man. He's a transgender woman. He's really a man. It was really awkward in the scene. You could tell something was weird about the woman, but moving on past that. So that was one thing going on. Um, Damon has a really cool vision. The one good thing that I will say about this episode is that Damon has one more vision at the Godswood in Heron Hall, and he has a, a huge vision of everything going on and he sees Daenerys and her dragons from Game of Thrones which is so cool um, he sees the White Walkers the vision was actually really cool and then it's revealed that Helena um, Alicent's daughter um, who lost her son in that one episode with Damon making the mistake and all that stuff she is actually a witch and she sees more than she thinks um, Aemond also was really mad about Vagar almost leaning blood into a trap and so he didn't get led into the trap at the end of the last episode and instead he gets mad and burns this whole city to the ground he comes back and he wants Helena because she's actually a dragon rider but she's very passive doesn't want to hurt anybody doesn't like dragon riding that whole thing he wants her to join in the fight and uh, the sea snake which I've been calling him the sea snake that's his ship name like his actual ship name um, his actual name is Lord Collis so sorry about that but that's who I mean when I'm talking about the sea snake guy um, he warns Rhaenyra that they're gonna that Helena is probably gonna join in the fight with her dragon, along with Aemon and of course Vagar, and reminds her of all the dragons that they have that King's Landing has. Um, and then sure enough, Aemon actually does try to get Helena to fight. Alicent is like, no, my daughter's nice, she's good, she's not gonna fight. All that stuff it makes Aemon mad. So when it's revealed that Helena is the one who gave Daemon the vision, her and Aemon have this confrontation, and she warns him that he's gonna die, um, and kind of lays out the future kind of thing, which was pretty pretty cool. Um, let's see what else. Rhaenyra actually uh, gets word that Damon may betray her. The guy that she sent to go check on Damon ends up joining, talking to Damon, and saying that you need to be king and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, that's when Damon has the vision in the godswood, and then she gets word from the uh, guy who actually like owns Heron Hall or whatever the Lord there that there's something amiss and that Damon may betray her. So she rides there, and that's when we see Caraxes, Damon's dragon, and her dragon because she flies there, and dismounts, and then she goes to confront Damon, and Damon basically admits that something you know winter is coming the only one who can we we have no chance of winning unless you know we're united under a single leader and that is why I serve you so he bent the knee everybody else all of the men that he this army he's amassed bent the knee and um, he submitted to her and I was hoping that they would have a ship moment and have a kiss but they didn't um, and then she talks with her lady waiting person that they shared a kiss a couple episodes ago that did nothing to any plot line character development arc thing it had no significance with anything um and so they have a conversation about how thousands are going to die there's also a couple scenes with Rhaenyra and um the new dragon riders one of them is just this idiot who is really disrespectful and honestly he's really annoying um and it's probably meant to be a little bit lighthearted, but it's just really falling flat so they have a few scenes to show how rude he is um, Jasiris has a conversation with his cousin, the Sea Snake's granddaughter, whatever, um, Lord Collis's daughter, about how mad he is. That, and he's kind of just sulking because he's an illegitimate son, technically speaking. And by giving um, illegitimate 
children, Targaryen, Targaryen children, the ability to, to like, have dragons, it kind of, like, lessens his claim to Rhaenyra's throne as the heir, and she, his cousin, or whoever, basically tells him to stop sulking. Um, yeah, and then Alicent comes to talk to Rhaenyra, uh, because now, apparently, Alicent thinks that you know, um, that this can be done without bloodshed and she tells Rhaenyra to come in three days to King's Landing and we'll open the doors and let you in because Aemon will be off with um, the the um, Sir Criston um, in the Riverlands and while he's gone we can open up the doors and surrender to you and all this stuff and it's like it took you this long to realize that you were wrong in the first place and like yeah I get the point because sometimes it takes a, a character who wants power and who thinks they're right it kind of takes them actually losing to realize that they were wrong in the first place but it's still kind of like I mean you should have done this to begin with and avoided all this crap really um, and so they have a really interesting conversation and then the ending is literally does this montage where it shows all the different houses and all the different people. Lord Collis also talks to his illegitimate son who's his first mate and kind of still refuses to acknowledge him um, and then the first mate, his illegitimate son, gives him an epic speech that I was like, yes, I relate to that. Go dude, you know, you weren't around in my childhood so you've no right to be around in my adulthood. Love that. Um, but yeah, and then the ending is just this montage of all the armies, and like uh, my sister pointed out that when a, when it, the different army would show, it was like each house like theme playing music wise in the background. So I thought that was pretty cool. It sounds like a lot, but it's honestly just all of these threads just kind of like being filled up and tied together, and there was no fighting. It was really anticlimactic. It was very slow. Um, there were a few good moments that I did like that were entertaining. Um, Damon and Rhaenyra talking and finally working out their crap. Damon getting his crap together. Damon having the vision in the godswood at Harrenhal. Um, the conversation with Rhaenyra and Alicent was a good scene. Um, there were a few long, again, the whole scenes with Alicent, just like the camera just zooming in at her and her just literally just that. Like, there's so much of just Alicent that you could have cut. Um, so yeah, there were, and then, oh, um, Lord Collis's other granddaughter, the one that's not bonded to a dragon, decided to chase after this wild dragon, and there were like four scenes that showed her running after the dragon, and the final one was her confronting the dragon. And I'm like, you could have just shown one scene to establish that she was chasing the dragon, cut the other two, and then showed the last one where she finally confronts the dragon. There was so much filler that didn't need to be there. Um, they could have saved so much screen time and actually given us at least a little bit of a fight. Um, they didn't need the extra scenes with the transgender uh, woman who's actually a dude. I, that confuses me why it's the opposite, but whatever. Um, that particular character and the Lannister guy fighting and then celebrating afterwards, that was not necessary. They could have just accepted and shown that, okay, the Lannister guy secured a fleet so that we can set that up for the next season. It's just like a lot of like threads that they felt like needed to be tied together, but it's like usually you do it in a little bit more of a past paced way because then you build to like some sort of big twist or big fight or big moment in the finale. And other than the vision and the godswood and the reveal about Helena, which I do love because she's been portrayed as this really docile, fragile, weak, like crazy girl who's like just going through too much grief for her crazy mind to handle and now she's like this witch person who may be like the three-eyed raven in game of thrones but whatever the case is she's like this witch and she's a lot more like tough and cool like brave and batty than we give her credit for and so i loved that and it's kind of implied that she is the one that's been that alice witch character that's been giving damon all these visions and i don't know why but my guess is that she can see that none of her brothers are going to be on the throne and so that's why she doesn't mind putting damon in his place and this whole arc with damon just okay episode whatever he's in Heron Hall. the next episode he's still in Heron Hall. the next episode after that he's still in Heron Hall. the next episode after that he's still in Heron Hall. the next episode after that he's still in Heron Hall. but hey all of this is added together to finally make him realize that he just needs to submit to Rhaenyra good character arc Damon a little it took too long to get there but the point is we got him there it's fine the reveal that Helena was the one giving him the visions I'm assuming she was the one being Alice uh, the Alice chick or having something to do with all of that that's all really really cool 
that was probably the most enjoyable part of it, and then getting to see the dragons, honestly, um, the wild dragon that the one granddaughter's chasing after, other than the extra scenes with her just running in the wilderness, which was not necessary, um, and then, of course, Rhaenyra flying her dragon to go confront Daemon, and we got to see Caraxes and stuff, and then the opening actually did open with Aemond on Vagar burning that town because he's infuriated because he realizes, oh, crap, I'm not invincible. Rhaenyra has extra dragons now, and I could actually die. Um, that's pretty much it. This whole episode did not feel like a finale and it just felt like filler and like the whole thing was just tying up loose ends but like a lot of it was not necessary. It could have been cut. The pacing felt weird. I don't know why you lead up to a battle and then don't actually do the battle in the finale and set it up to be the opening sequence of the next like season. Like maybe that'll be good but like you put the battle in the end of the episode in the, at the end of the season and then end us on a cliffhanger and then continue that for next episode next season so I don't know it didn't feel like a finale and to be honest like for me this was like the first three star episode of the season because I was bored most of it other than the good scenes I told you about I was so bored and that has not been the case like if this was a middle episode the pacing the filler stuff would be understandable but this is the finale so the higher like the finale should be better and should be more entertaining and it wasn't and for me that was just really sad and three star episode and it didn't feel like a finale so overall this was very disappointing to me but i am happy with the season the season two of house of the dragon overall as a whole so it's been a really decent show a decent season i think it worked much better than season one because they actually did more dragons and once they did the scene the time jumps in season one they were able to like continue events consecutive events consecutively and that worked really well for season two so yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, what did you guys think of this finale and all of this season? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, if you liked this video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more writing and reading videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And in the meantime, if you liked my review of House of the Dragon, then check out my reviews of Avatar The Last Airbender live action show. Um, I reviewed every episode. It's pretty, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of thoughts though because there were pacing issues in that one too, just like how there were pacing issues in this episode. So check that out. Video will be up here. You don't want to miss it.